Okay, so I wanted to share a behind the scenes video clip from an interview I had with Dr. Scott McKendrick back in the year 2008. Dr. McKendrick is the head of Western Manuscripts at the British Library in London. He was also the lead curator of the Codex Sinaiticus project, which scanned and uploaded every available page of the manuscript to its own website back in 2009. Dr. McKendrick was also one of the editors of a book called The Bible as Book, The Transmission of the Greek Text. In this book, he records the testimony of Professor J. Neville Birdsall, who was a paleographer and was considered an expert on the Codex Vaticanus. Birdsall says at one point, quote, in short, we cannot be certain of the exact date nor the place of origin of Codex Vaticanus, nor in spite of scholarly efforts can its history before the 15th century be traced. In other words, there is no historic evidence for the existence of Vaticanus prior to the 15th century. This point is significant since the earliest record of the manuscript is the year 1475, when it was first entered into the catalog of the Vatican Library. Furthermore, Desiderius Erasmus believed that the manuscript was created at some point during the Council of Florence in the 1430s and 40s. Yet modern critics claim that the manuscript dates back to the 4th century and is one of the oldest and best manuscripts, they say, one that they've used to justify a variety of changes to modern translations of the Bible. Now, with all of that in mind, consider our clip of Dr. Scott McKendrick when we asked him to speak about the Codex Vaticanus. Okay. I was going to ask you to compare Sinaiticus alongside Vaticanus, right. Codex Vaticanus. Or can you? <laughs> can you compare the two? What is the comparison? How does Sinaiticus right. compare with Vaticanus? Well, Codex uh, Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus are very closely related. Uh, past critics have even seen uh, one of the same scribes in each of the manuscripts. Uh, that's not all, not all critics accept that, but they are very, very closely contemporary. They're also very similar in their ambitions to include the whole of the Christian Bible, so they have uh, the Septuagint and the New Testament. They're large volumes written on, on vellum, uh, written in this very handsome, uh, luxurious uh, script. So they're, they're high-end manuscripts. Um, and they, but they're different in, in so, some critical respects. Uh, the, they order the books of the Bible differently. And they also have different books in the Septuagint. They don't have exactly the same selection of books. Uh, they're different also in quite one, one critical way in that Sinaiticus, or two ways actually I'd say, two ways. One is that uh, Vaticanus does not have the, the extent of correction. That's a very critical difference. Sinaiticus is the, the most corrected manuscript of a Greek manuscript of the, the scriptures. The second is that uh, Vaticanus has a very, now has a very strange appearance. When you look at it as a sort of manuscript expert, although you know that people tell you that it's a, it's a 4th century manuscript, it actually looks like a 15th century manuscript. And there's one very simple reason for that, is that almost the entire text has been overwritten by a 15th century scribe. Not only that, he's added in 15th century decoration, titling, and so forth. So it has a very strange appearance. In contrast, um, although you've got the corrections within Sinaiticus, it is essentially, um, it reflects how it was when it was written in the 4th century. 